Jesus knows why he gives us what he gives us. And I pray that <clears throat> this morning, what he's going to give to us will be useful to your life. Amen. Amen. Beloved, um, we have uh, in the last week uh, seen what had happened. Uh, during Easter, we knew that Jesus died and he was resurrected. And through that, we are who we are today. Um, if he had not resurrected, as we have consistently uh, 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 informed ourselves and uh, <clears throat> come to understand that if he had not resurrected, then the death would not have been that useful. Uh, you can't talk about death without resurrection, but you also can't talk about resurrection without death. They are, uh, they are inseparable, I would say, and they go hand in hand. Amen. But this morning, uh, after he resurrected, uh, he <clears throat> walked around uh, with his disciples, showed himself to a lot of them, but then gave final instructions before he left. And unfortunately, many of us, we've not paid attention to the final instructions that Jesus gave. If you look at all four Gospels, you will see that he spoke uh, to the disciples, the same disciples, but you will see the account <clears throat> Slightly, uh, it's not different, but there is a slight um, emphasis in each uh, gospel and depending on uh, what uh, the writer emphasized on. But we will try and look at all four gospels and we'll try and look at some four points uh, that I believe that we need to really pay attention. Why do I want us to do this? Anyone dying or anyone, I mean, Jesus died, he resurrected, and he went to the Father. And when he was going to the Father, he gave final instructions. And you will realize that if anyone is traveling, a parent is traveling, and give final instructions to the child, it is for the child to know that these are very close to the Father's heart, and this is the way he wants you to live. And uh, if you, your child is going to school, for example, those of us who have kids uh, who are in uh, boarding schools uh, and they are not home, we give them uh, certain advice before they leave. And Jesus did not leave us like that. He gave some final instructions before he left. And those are the things that I would want us to look at. Amen. If you go to First uh, Corinthians chapter 15, 5 to 7, we will see over there uh, that he said... Uh, and that, he and, and that he was seen of, and that he appeared to save us, and then to the twelve. After that, he appeared to more than 500 of the brothers and sisters at the same time, most of whom are still living, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Amen. And uh, if you add the aid, and he said, and, the, and last of all, he appeared to me also, as to one abnormally born. Uh, basically, he appeared to many people. So Jesus showed himself to many people before he left. And I remember at one point he said, I'm not a ghost. A ghost can eat, so give me food to eat. And he ate with them for them to know that he is not indeed a ghost. Amen. So after he had shown himself to all these people and spoken to them on many, uh, at many different times, he now began, I mean, uh, uh, I will start from John. He now told him uh, that he was going to leave. I mean, he was going to ascend, and he gave some instructions. Now, if you, look at the, if, if you look at John's account, it's quite interesting, and that's where I'm going to really start from. Amen. Amen. Um, when he appeared, when he met them, Peter had gone fishing with some of the disciples. And if you read it, uh, you realize that there were about seven of them. Uh, remember, they were, they were left with um, 11 because one is dead. Now, he left with um, a, a good number of the rest. And seriously, if you look at what he said, he did not force anyone. Amen. Let's go to John. <laughs> I mean, it's quite interesting the way he did it. And I want everyone to understand that if you are a leader, people will follow you. 
Aleluia. Aleluia. All that he said in verse 3, John 21, verse 3. I'm going out to fish. Simon Peter told them. And they said, we'll go. Did he invite anyone? He said he was going to fish. But when a leader speaks, the people follow. I want you to watch because I'm really coming to a certain point that will interest you a lot. Because if the leader, the leader must really lead by example. And if the leader says, I'm going to do something, you realize that his people tend to follow him. So he said, I'm going out to fish, Simon Peter told them. And they said, we'll go with you. So they went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Amen. Now, if you go to verse 2, I mean, if you go to, let's read 1 and 2. For you to get a little bit more understanding the number of people that really followed him. Afterward, Jesus appeared again to his disciples by the Sea of Galilee. It happened this way. You know, he had told them that they should meet him in Galilee. That's what he said. So they had gone there. And then Simon Peter, Thomas, Nathaniel, the, uh, the sons of Zebedee, two, okay, and two other disciples, two more. So... They were seven. Amen. Now, seven people. And one of them says, I'm going to fish. And let us not forget that he's been told that he will fish for men. Amen. He will fish for fish again. But then he said, I'm going to fish. And his friends followed him to go and fish. Hallelujah. So we need to really understand that when he spoke, although he did not invite them, they followed their leader. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's go to Matthew chapter 4, 18 and 19. As Jesus was walking beside the Sea of Galilee, where? I said, where? Go to John 21, verse 1. Afterward, Jesus appeared again to his disciples. Why is it happening at the same place? Now, let's go to Matthew. He saw two brothers, Simon, called Peter, and his brother Andrew. They were casting a net into the lake, for they were, what did then Jesus say? Come, follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for, not for, I saw you fishing for fish. But I'm changing your destiny. I'm changing your life. I'm changing your purpose. You're not going to fish for fish again, but you're going to fish for people. Hallelujah. Now, that's where it all started. Fast forward. Before ascension. Same place. Remember. He's gone for fishing. Fishing for fish. Not for people. Amen. Also, Jesus, when he appeared to them, what a gentleman he is. He never condemned them, did not say anything, but saw how fruitless their night has been. How fruitless your efforts most of the time are. You know, we, we're trying to really get by our strength. But if you do not follow instructions of Jesus, you will be wasting a lot of your time. He said fish for people, not fish for fish. 
So if you go fishing for fish, you don't get fish because you can't find people in the sea. Hallelujah. He's going to let you. You see, it, <laughs> the buck stops with him. It doesn't stop with you. It stops with him. So, okay. So Jesus is not around, so I'm just going to really do something. You see, he won't see you. Let me go and do something. Let me go catch some fish. And they went to catch some fish. That's quite interesting. But they got nothing. Who, who rules the sea? Who controls the fishes? He had forgotten that he could really mark a fish that there was money in his mouth. So he has control of the. He knows every fish. Each and every one of them. He knows the one that has money in their mouth, and he knows where they are. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So he says that, what have you got? Nothing? Okay, just go by the side and then cast your nets. And they cast the net and they got so much fish. Now, after you see, he just wanted them to see who he really is. And from that moment, whether they're going to really follow instructions. So after that, he had uh, breakfast with them. And after he had had breakfast with them, now he called Peter. Hallelujah. The, all of them were around, but he didn't address all. He addressed Peter three times. Asked the same question. Do you love me more than these? Do you love me? And do you love me? Amen. Three times. How many times did he deny him? If you love me, you won't deny me. Amen. If you love me, you will follow the instructions I gave you. If you love me, hallelujah, you will remember what I told you when I met you first time. At the same place. What did I say? Follow me. Do what? So in that conversation, at the end of it all, he now tells Peter, he asks him once more in verse 19. Jesus said this to indicate a kind of, I mean, after he had told him about he will be guided when he grows, he will be. Then he said to him, do what? What does the Bible say? Then he said to him, I said, then he said to him, let's go back to where we began, Peter. You did not follow me. You followed me, but you didn't follow me. You followed me, but you didn't obey my instructions. I told you at the same spot by the Sea of Galilee that today you will follow me and you will not be catching fish any longer but you will be catching people. Now, you really overlooked everything. I'm asking you, do you love me? You said yes, but you denied me three times. The people I left with you, instead of teaching them how to catch people, you have sent them back. Hallelujah. Then he said to him, follow me. I did not ask you all these things for nothing because the truth is that you did not follow me. Many of us are going ahead of God. Many of us are not following. You see, if you follow him, open your eyes. Elisha and Elijah, Bible says that Elisha followed Elijah. He saw what he did. So when Elisha, Elijah left, the moment he left and he took the mantle, he began to do. He did not go back to tend for his cattle and plow and do all the things that he was doing. He began to do what he, the one he followed was doing. Hallelujah. Because he did not just follow, but he watched, he studied, he learned. So the last thing, my goodness, the last thing Elijah did before he was taken away by the chariots of fire, was that he struck the water. And then the water opened. When he got the mantle, the first thing he did was not think about his cattle that he had left. Oh my God, the one I followed is gone. And what am I going to do? He didn't do that. He took the mantle. He said, look, 
If he did it, I'm going to start now. I'm not going to wait next year. I'm not going to wait two years. I'm going to start right now. He took it. He struck it. Boom. It opened. And he began to walk through. Now, Peter didn't do that. Peter didn't do that. How did he follow? How are you following the master? Do you see what he does? If Jesus, listen to me carefully, if Jesus had not come to this meeting, there would have been a problem. Their focus would never have been on people. They love fish. You love money. Hallelujah. If Jesus had not had this meeting, this last meeting with them, there would have been trouble. He had worked with them for three years or three and a half years, however you want to really calculate it. He had worked with them. He had taught them. He had suffered before them. He had, they had seen everything. Yet, why were they following him? Did they indeed follow? It's a question you need to ask. Were they indeed following him, studying him, understanding what he's doing, and obeying the instructions he had given to them? Hallelujah. Unfortunately, beloved in the Lord, there is a problem in the church today. Amongst us Christians, all of us Christians, we are at a place in our journey with the Lord where we need to pay attention and follow. But many of us are not. Many, many, many of us are not. And, beloved, I don't want you to see me as somebody who is always uh, speaking against the church. I don't speak against the church. But what I try to do is to really help all of us to understand that where we are going is so wrong that we need to change. Because if we don't change, beloved, something worse will happen to us. And it will be at a time we can repent and we can change. Because Christ is coming soon. And this is not the time to really turn our focus on unnecessary things. We need to focus on the things that really matter. Hallelujah. These were the final instructions. So he made Peter understand in John that, look, I want you to understand this one thing. Make sure... You obey this one instruction. Follow me. Follow me. And you see, when he said follow me, Peter began to follow him. And then John, hallelujah, also began to follow them at a distance. Beloved in the Lord, I want us to understand when we are following him, we need to pay attention. Don't be, I said, don't be like Lot's wife. Jesus says, follow me. And this is what Elisha did, but Peter didn't do. When Elisha followed Elijah, even though he was hearing voices, he did not pay attention to the voices. His focus was on the one that he was following. And therefore, his attention was really, really solidly be behind him. And he saw and he understood what was happening. So, when he asked him, what do you want from me? And he said that, I want double portion of your anointing. He said that, if you see me, go. If you see me, go. If you see me go means that you need to pay attention, watch, and follow me. And he followed him, paid attention to the extent that you said you want double portion of my anointing, but you need my mantle. So when he saw the mantle fall, he went for it. If he had been like Lot's wife, he wouldn't have seen. If he had been like Peter, 
he wouldn't have seen. Peter was troubled and concerned about so many unnecessary things. What is one of them? Jesus said, follow me. He did not say, turn around and look at who is following us. These people are not. Come. He said, follow me. Did not say, turn around and look at who is also following us. That's not your responsibility. Your duty is to follow me. Look at what I'm doing. Study what I'm, I mean, I'm telling you. And pay attention so that you can do and you will not go fishing again. But even at that moment, he turned around. What about this guy who is following us? Is that any of your business? And that's why Jesus told him. Peter turned and saw that the disciple whom Jesus loved was following them. This was the one who had leaned back against Jesus at the supper and had said, Lord, who is going to betray you? Go to the next verse. When Peter saw him, he asked, Lord, what about him? Whoop pass him. Hallelujah. Jesus answered, whoop pass him. Hallelujah. Jesus answered, if I want him to remain alive until I return, what is that to you? Is that your business? You must follow me and stop talking about people. You must follow me and stop watching other people. I am Jesus. I am the one calling you. Follow me. Instead of following him, you have stopped and you are discussing about somebody else. Is that your business? What about this? What has John done to you? What has he done? Are you in competition with him? What's your problem? Jesus says, do what? Sit down. Listen. If you don't stop looking at her. Yeah, but you see, I pray that I don't know why all my friends are buying cars and is that your business? Jesus said what? Follow me. Jesus is not into, is he blind? Is Jesus, if you can see, what about Jesus? But you see, when I went online, all the people I finished school with, now they are married and, they, and so what? Is that any of your business? What did Jesus say? Follow me. If you are following Jesus, stop gossiping. And you see, the irony of it, he, is gossip, he wants to gossip with Jesus. He wants to gossip with Jesus. Many of us are gossiping with Jesus. When we go before, instead of telling him what is important to us and him, you see, Lord, I don't understand why this one. You see, look at me. I have served you all these years. And look, well, this one came only. Look at his testimony. I want, my friend, is that your business? What did he say? Follow me. Simple. If you don't understand, it means dimechi. Hallelujah. Don't go ahead of me. Follow me. Stop looking at people. They are not supposed to be your focus. Your focus is Jesus. If Jesus now says that, go after this one, go after that one, now you go. Hallelujah. That's the first thing. He wants us to follow him. Jesus' instructions before he ascended was that we ought to follow him. Following him does not mean just walking behind him. It means paying attention to what he's doing so we can do likewise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's go to Luke chapter 24. Many of us are following him, but our minds are not opened up. Hallelujah. Amen. Verse 45 to 49. Then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. Many of us, we need God to open our minds. Many of us, we have blocks over there. And we can't understand anything. And God needs to open our minds 
so that we can begin to understand. Because if we don't understand, we will follow him, but we will not know or understand what he's doing. So he needs, it got to a point, he had to open their minds. Hallelujah. So that he will do what? Understand what is going on. Because a lot of us, we even read the Bible, but we don't understand anything. We read. It's not like we don't read. We don't understand anything. One of the things I want you to do is to pray. Begin to pray that Lord open the eyes of my understanding. In Ephesians, Paul spoke about that. And he said, I pray that your, the eyes of your understanding will be enlightened. So that you will see the hope to which he has called. You know, many of us, the reason we are struggling and fighting and wanting everything for ourselves here on earth is that we don't even know the hope for which he has called us. You see, you've been called to, to, to go to heaven one day and enjoy with God. So if you know what's in heaven, you won't chase after the things here. Your focus will be, hallelujah. That's why in Colossians, Paul wrote and he said that, set your mind and set your heart not on. Unfortunately, we are so much engulfed here that we want everything here. Everything, we want everything here. So it doesn't matter how we get it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I said it doesn't matter how we get it. We are so much involved, so we are even making friendships. We are making alliances. We are making all kinds of things with people we don't even have to deal with. Just because we want money. Amen. Because our minds are so much factored into the now. We are so much, look. And last week I told you, I said, spend time reading 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Spend time to read the whole chapter. Last week I said it, I'll say it again. Spend time because, you see, if we do not understand why we are here, we will chase after things that doesn't really matter. And that's what a lot of us are doing. But we need to change. So, the first thing Jesus did was to open Hallelujah. Their minds so that they can understand. Hallelujah. Go to the next verse. He told them, this is what is written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. He now began because he now they need to understand what has happened. So he's telling them, one, about his suffering. Two, about his death. And three, about his resurrection. So he, they needed to understand why he did or he went through each and everything that he went through. Hallelujah. This is what is written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. And repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations. Beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things because you opened your eyes, you followed me, and you saw it. So every instructions, you know, four different, I mean, four different people wrote the Gospels. But if you look at the final instructions, they tie in with one another. Hallelujah. If you are going to follow me, then you will see, you will be witnesses of these things. And you will have to go and preach to the people for the, for the forgiveness of their sins because of what I did on the cross. Hallelujah. The, you need to go and do it. So you can't say that I won't do it. Amen. Amen. And 49 says that I am going to send you what my father has promised. Hallelujah. But stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Hallelujah. You've watched me. you followed me. You have understood it now because I've opened your mind to understand. Everything that you did not understand, now you understand. Now that you understand, you, I am sending you to go and preach to the people. And before you do that, 
you need to be equipped, empowered, because when I was with you, the Spirit of God was not living inside of you. So anytime I sent you, I will do what? I will give you the Spirit, and I will enable you to go, and the Spirit will use you. That is why when they came back in Luke chapter 10, they said that we, anywhere we stood, Demons obeyed us when we mentioned your name because he has equipped and empowered them with the Spirit of God. It is not by your strength that you will speak and anybody will do anything. Hallelujah. It's only when the power of the Holy Ghost is alive inside of you. Hallelujah. And you are not starving him. Many of us, we starve him. Hallelujah. And if we don't starve him, he is going to manifest himself. Hallelujah. I said he's going to do what? Manifest himself. So don't move. Wait. Be empowered before you go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the first instructions, we will look at all four later on. But what I want you to really understand is that he said, follow me. Watch what I'm doing. Now I open your mind to understand what I'm doing so that um, you will go and preach. But don't go yet. Wait until you are empowered. Hallelujah. And then you will go and then you will do the things. Mark chapter 16. And I'm telling you, it's all intertwined one way or the other. Hallelujah. Mark chapter 16, 14 to 20. Later... Jesus appeared to the eleven as they were eating. He rebuked them for their lack of faith and their stubborn refusal to believe those who had seen him after he had risen. He said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. Whoever, now, same go into the world, I will, I'm sending you. Now, he said, he said be, wait until you are empowered. Now, after you are empowered, he says that do what? Go into the world and preach. And whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. But whoever does not believe will be condemned. Now go to the next one quickly. And these signs will accompany those who believe in my name. They will drive up. Because my spirit lives in you, these signs will accompany you. Because he comes, he gives you power. And that's why you ought to wait. That's why you don't have to go. But wait. Hallelujah. So that when he comes on, uh, upon you, he will empower you and you will, these signs will follow you. Hallelujah. And it will follow everyone else who believes as well. Hallelujah. In my name, they will drive out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up snakes and their hands and, uh, with their hands. And when they drink deadly poison, it will not hurt them at all. They will place their hands on sick uh, people and they will get well. After the Lord Jesus had spoken to them, he was taken up into heaven and he sat at the right hand of God. Last instructions go preach. Go do what? And because you will have to wait for the Spirit of God to come upon you, when you go and preach, these signs will follow you. So we are not to preach dry preaching. When we preach, something must happen. Because Bible says that he confirmed this word by the signs that follow them. So he will confirm his word by the signs that will follow you. And that is why it is important for us. You see, we want to do one thing, but we don't want the process that will get us to where God wants us to get to. Sad. Sad. I pray that the power of God will come back to his church. I pray that the power of God will cause signs to follow us. And Jesus will confirm his word wherever we stand to preach. Wherever we stand to talk, he will confirm his word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Follow me. Hallelujah. And when you are following me, I've opened your mind. To do what? To understand. Hallelujah. Uh, so now, as we follow him, now we understand what he is doing. Amen. I said, now we do what? And he says that after you have understand, I'm going to send you, but I want you to wait and receive this power. 
And now, if you receive this power and you go on the journey I'm sending you, you will see the signs following you. Hallelujah. And then we go to Almighty Matthew. Matthew 28, 16 to 20. Then the 11 disciples went to Galilee, where Jesus asked them to go. To the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. Next verse. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, therefore, go and make disciples. Now, it's not go and just preach. Make what? Of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. But he doesn't end there. And teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Jesus, oh my goodness, wants us to do certain things. He's saying that go preach. When people believe, signs will follow you. But after the signs that follow you, don't leave them like that. Bring them in, disciple them, nurture them, grow them to be who I want them to be. Hallelujah. And in the process of nurturing them, discipling them, it is not your words or neither your command, but my command. Don't teach them what you think. Don't teach them what you dreamt of yesterday. Teach them my commands, which are in the Bible. And don't just talk to them about the commands, but teach them. There's a difference between teaching them and teaching them to obey. When you are teaching them to obey, you make sure that they obey. Hallelujah. So that's what the final instructions he gave were that Christians, we have to follow him. And he's saying that he's opened up our understanding. In fact, when Peter and the rest followed him, they didn't even understand anything. So now he says that as you follow me, I've opened up your mind. You will understand what I mean, why I came, what I did, my purpose here, and what I've left with you. And once you understand that, I'm going to send you. But don't do anything yet. Wait until you receive power. Remember, he had already said that when I go, I will send him. And he has not gone, so he has not sent him. So now he said, I'm about to go and I will send him. But don't rush. Wait. Wait until he comes. Wait until he empowers you. And then when, once he, he has empowered you, now you need to move and go and do what I've sent you to go and do. And that is what? Not to get rich. I said, that is not to get rich. That is not to have a good time. Jesus has not called us to have a good time. He's not called us to get rich. That's not our calling. Hallelujah. But he knows what is needful for us. If he wants us to be rich because he needs rich people to do his business, he is going to make you rich. He knows how to make people rich. Hallelujah. He knows where the money is. He knows that he keeps some in the, in the mouth of a fish. He, no, you see, who will, go to, who will go to his fish farm and then put money in his fish's mouth? Who will do that? It's only Jesus. Because if you put your money in the mouth of a fish, he will swim away with it. You are going to be broke. Go and catch fishes and put your money in their mouth and see whether you have money next time. It will swim and go. It is only the one who has power over the fishes who would keep his money in the mouth of the fish. Because any time he wants it and he calls the fish, he will come. You know, fishes respond to him. When, when, listen, 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 listen. When Jonah m- messed up, God, Bible says that he commanded the fish to go and swallow him. And when he had swallowed him and he began repenting in the belly of a fish, now he instructed the fish. Fish, look, there was no GPS at the time. I said there was no GPS at the time. 
there was no, nothing like that. But you see, the God of heaven, if people say that they are wise and they are making GPS and they're making chat GPT and all kinds of things and they know how to code, I mean, I laugh because God started coding when nobody was coding. Yeah. Hallelujah. He sits in heaven and he tells a fish on, on, under the sea, look, take these coordinates. Hallelujah. Take these coordinates. You are a fish. You are in the, I mean, in the bottom of the sea. You don't know coordinates. But you see, when I called you, hallelujah, when I do the coding and I give you the coordinates, you go do just right what I want you to do. Hallelujah. And he said, go and then drop him at this beach. Hallelujah. And the fish went. And dropped him there. You know, sometimes you don't need transport. You need God. (laughs) He's going to, you know, sometimes we don't know how we're going to get to our destination. Hallelujah. But with Jonah, to get to his destination, he needed a fish. With, with, With Philip, to get to his destination, he needed Ira. Hallelujah. He needs to get missing. He needs to, you know, he, it's, it's quite interesting. He, he is God. He decides. You see, yeah, but he gave this one this transport. That's not your business. He can let someone fly, but he will, you will go by boat. I said he will let someone fly, but you will go by car. The point is that you get to your destination. That's what is important. Hallelujah. Philip got to his des- destination. But Jonah also got to his destination. And so, when he knows how to really order fishes to drop people somewhere, hallelujah, he can keep his money in the mouth of a fish. Hallelujah. But he's instructed, listen to me carefully this morning. What am I trying to say? Many of us are not paying attention to the final instructions. And it's not you. The problem is not you. The problem is us, the pastors. We have changed the focus. And we've made it about here and the now. We have made it about what you can do here, what you can make here, how rich you can become, how powerful you can become, how popular you can become. Hallelujah. It's sad. I mean, I don't have the time. And I'm not, I'm, I'm not here to really um, make it look like, um, I mean, what do I say? But I just want you to really understand that we've lost it. We've lost it. Musicians are now focused on fame. Hallelujah. So we sing to make a name for ourselves, not to honor the God that gave us the voice. Hallelujah. So, and watch this. We preach, we, the pastors, we preach to let people focus on us, how rich we have become. And we talk about our Rolexes. We talk about designer shoes. What has that got to do with the message? We talk about latest cars. We talk about how many countries we have visited. That's irrelevant. It doesn't help anyone. What has that got to do with the message? Follow me. Did Jesus announce where he had gone to? Hallelujah. Listen to me, there are so many people that their minds are not yet opened. Let us begin to pray that our minds will be opened. He says that you need a Holy Spirit and I need a Holy Spirit. Because in John chapter 4, Jesus said, a time is coming. Can you put it there, 22 to 25, uh, 24? 
you Samaritans worship what you do not know. We worship what we do know, for salvation is from the Jews. Yet, that's irrelevant. Yet, that is what irrelevant. Why? Because there is a time coming and has now come when the true worshippers will worship the Father in the spirit and in truth. For they are the kind of worshippers the Father seeks. Hallelujah. Why? Because God is spirit. God is not a man, but God is spirit. And his worshippers must not worship with a nice building, which is, it's okay. But that's not where the focus is. There are church. Oh my goodness. There are places that are so nice, but it's empty because the Spirit is not there. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. But Jesus said, God is Spirit, and His worshippers must worship in the and in not in lies. Listen to me. We've lost it. We are in error. The things that are important, his final instructions, are not important to us anymore. And I said from the beginning that if someone is dying or is going on a journey, he gives the final instructions. And those are the instructions that are very close to his heart. And he wants you to know. Jesus, on this occasion, did not talk about money. Did not talk about where you sleep. Did not talk about your wife. Neither your husband. He did not focus on any of that. We have messed up big time. And we are following the very things he never spoke about. But the very things he spoke about, we have decided not to follow. How many of us are following him? How many of us really study his word and understand what he's saying to his church? How many of us have patience to wait for the Holy Spirit? How many of us are willing to go and preach? How many of us are manifesting the power of the Spirit in the manifestation of the gifts? And how many of us are willing, number one, to nurture people? And number two, how many of us, as, as the people, are willing to sit down to be nurtured to obey the commands of the Lord? We all say it's difficult to follow his commands. But you see, he's not going to really judge you by your commands or your pastor's commands. It's going to be by his commands. If you learn to obey anything, learn to obey the commands of the Lord. God bless you.